All right, so today we are winterizing my 2008 Mastercraft X2 uh, with the MCX350 engine. So to start with, we've got some Prestone Waterline antifreeze, uh, no burst down to 100, minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, recommended for RV, pool, boat, and seasonal home. Um, I prefer to get the, the red stuff. I don't know, the green stuff I've heard can be toxic um, if you start your boat and it runs into the lake. So um, I just get the red stuff. Uh, I've heard some people talk about anti-corrosion and that kind of thing, but I store my boat inside during the winter. So what you want probably is around uh, five and a half to six gallons is what I have heard. Um, and I have, each of these are one gallon, so I have eight of them because I'm going to put uh, a few of them in the ballast tanks as well is recommended. And then also I have an engine fogger, which we'll do kind of at the end, and it just takes a quick spray, and we'll kind of show you where that goes. And then some fuel stabilizer. I have about a quarter tank in my uh, gas tank right now in the boat which is about good for storing it. You probably don't want to do like a full tank of gas uh, for storing it over the winter time, but um, this can treat up to 20 gallons. So uh, even though I have a quarter uh, of a tank, I'll probably put most, if not all of it in the, uh, in the gas tank. So the first thing I did was remove the side panels just to make it easier to access the engine from each side. So I kind of did that from both sides. Just in case when Ron, my buddy, gets here who knows a lot more about boats and engines and stuff than I do is going to help me. And I'm going to film this video just so that I don't have to bother him every fall to continue to help me winterize my boat. Now I should be able to just reference this video and do it myself. So the, the one on the bottom comes down to this fresh water intake hose that comes down. Yeah, I can't really see exactly where it goes because it's under your under your engine, but yeah, we're going to take that one off. And it should come off pretty easily because we had it off last year. Yep. So it's the one underneath that one. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, I always forget how tight it is in here. <laughs> yeah, yours is... I know, yours is so much easier. Mine's got the same engine, but... Just easier access. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Night and day difference. Yeah. All right, step one is complete. We got the hose off under here. We got that hose. The bottom hose is free. I don't know if you can see that. Pretty tight under there. The issue I've had with doing the fake lake thing is that I've n I've never had luck getting the boat to pull the antifreeze up that far. Gotcha. I, I don't know if there's something about the specific gravity of the antifreeze or maybe if the antifreeze is slicker than water. So it's better to do it down I, versus up? Yeah, it's just... It's, it's, I found it to be, for me, it's been easier. So I need to make this bucket system? Or, yeah, or you can borrow my, heck, it's easy. It's just a bucket with, all, all I've got is, I've got okay. a with a fitting coming yep. out to a piece of this hose. And then down into that yep. tube that we just loosened? Yep. Okay. And then, then this one goes into the. Into Want the, me to do it? I'll let it it'll go right. It should go right.
All right, so we're running two hoses into the bucket because one is not enough water. So we're doubling up this year. Two hoses. All right, I'd go ahead. All right, so we got two hoses running in and Ron is pinching one of them to control the level of the water now that the engine is taking in the water. Cool. Yeah, she's staying pretty full. So we're running the boat to warm it up. You want to get it to 160. And the reason you want 160? to 160? Yeah, the reason you want to get it to that is uh, you want your thermostat to open so that um, all the passageways are uh, full in water. Okay. I'm just going to make sure we got good while we're turning. We'll make sure we got good water coming out of the exhaust down here. Okay. We got water flowing from the bucket, that's good, into the intake. And we want to get the temperature up to 160 because Ron said that'll open the thermostat and get all the water running through there. 160. Matt, we can still fog it through there. Yeah. Okay. So this hose. Oh, okay. Goes on there like that. Okay. So we can fog it through there. Yep. Okay. Should, what's the engine tip? I'm guessing. Oh, we're at one past 160. Okay. Now we're down to one hose in the bucket. Let that water. Oh. Look, <laughs> <Can I spray? laughs> No, no. Okay. I got it. Yeah, so what we'll do is once then um, we'll let this continue to run just another minute longer. Then we'll run this hose just over the side of the boat. Okay. And then start pouring the antifreeze in. Okay. And then the, as the last bit of antifreeze is being sucked in, we'll spray a little fogging oil in and uh, it, as you shut the key off. Okay. So for pouring the antifreeze in, do we let the water go all the way down it's, it's best if you can. yeah that, that way so it doesn't mix yeah that way you know you're pulling in just pure antifreeze gotcha when it's time to do that Hose is out, and we're letting the water go through the engine there. Man, it goes pretty quick, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I like to have these things already open. Yeah, have them open and ready. Yeah. Yeah. Ready to go. So basically, both buckets are full. No, the bottom bucket's just a pass-through. Oh, so it does Oh, that's right. Yeah, it doesn't actually fill up. I see. Do you need me to help? Uh, I think it's right Okay. Now. Throw those overboard. The guy online said he tries to use stable or uh, antifreeze with 
anti-corrosion agents or something. Okay. He said he, it, it may just help with corrosion eventually, year over year. But he said, try not to use antifreeze with alcohol in it. Some of the, some antifreezes have alcohol in it. Yeah, it's, um, he said that can dry out after a while. Your your tubing. I don't think this does have alcohol in it, but he suggested not for the alcohol. Perfect. So I turned the key, turned the boat off right as we were getting to the end of the antifreeze and then Ron sprayed a fogging in there as well right at the end. And we got antifreeze <coughs> coming out <coughs> the back. So that's a good sign because that means it's filled. It made it through. Made it through. Yeah. And we got a couple left over. So I can put those in the ballast. I gotta go grab that funnel. So now we are blowing the heater core out. So we got a socket wrench. Oh, that one's loose. And why are we doing this? Because we probably didn't get really good antifreeze flow into the heater core because it... Okay. Um, so there's a really high possibility that there's water standing in your heater core. Gotcha. Which your heater core is basically just a small, it's like a, uh, um, it's like a radiator that a fan blows in to mm -hmm. push warm air over your feet. Okay. So is it something where we just unhook it, let the water flow out, and hook it back in? Yeah, well, that might. I actually just blow into it with my mouth and get it. Oh. In, and that'll. Gotcha. Last year, since it's such a yeah, we did because I remember that part. Okay, is that water coming out? Yeah, oh, geez, well, it's water and antifreeze. Okay. Oh, he's blowing in it to get all the water out of there. Okay, that was the last of it. <laughs> Looks like you're hitting a bong. How would you want to <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. No, I've uh, uh, hookah. I've hookahed. Okay. I've hookahed. I used to hookah well, back in the day. Well, I might have been a bong ripper. <laughs> well, you'd be crazy if you didn't. Yeah, that's a lot different than when I was younger. <laughs> Hit you a little different. It, it, yeah, it's not. <laughs> I don't know whether it's whether it hits you different or. Uh, whether it's age, whether it's... <laughs> it's got to be age. Or the strength of today's... Or it could be, yeah. 
Well, depends if you were probably in Mexico or not. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to hookah back in the day. I don't have any friends that do it still, but I liked, I liked hookah. Yeah? Yeah. All the different flavors and stuff. Need that right side. Yeah. Tighten that thing back up. Perfect. Now I know which one it is. That's and then that one on the other end on the water pump end. Mm-hmm. Reinstall it. So that's the heater. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Gotcha. That is for the heater. There's the barb. Tell it where it's at when you get on. Oh, I can kind of see your hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right in there. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, there's two. There's two small. There's two small hoses in in your cooling system, and they're both for your heater. So. Gotcha. One comes directly off the pump, and then the other one comes off the block. Okay. And you, got, you got this block. So, like, if you if for some reason you didn't want to use your heater. You can just va you can valve that all the way off. I gotcha, and it just sh it just pinches it off. Pinches so it doesn't, it off. Doesn't go through. Gotcha. As, as long as your heater is good in good shape, mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt to leave it open though. Okay. But, you know. But yeah, it, I don't it, use it, but it's I've always left it open. I feel yeah, like. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we're putting the fuel stabilizer in. We're gonna put it all in. Try to not have a bunch of gas in there during storage. Most people tell you to fill it up. Do they really? Yeah. They, the, so the reason for for filling it completely is because the air in your the air in your gas tank, as it heats and cools during uh, storage, it, it'll pull in moisture in the air. So oh. You get, more, you get more moisture in your gas if it's. Gotcha. 